Z political analyst John Keller joins us now. And John, there was this narrative about this primary being a game changer, out with the old, in with the new. Presley billing herself as a disruptive presence, and that appears to be what happened here tonight. Certainly. One way to to sort of analyze what went on now is to uh, here tonight is to look at what didn't happen, David and Anna Ritas. Mike Capuano didn't do anything wrong. He worked hard to serve his district. He campaigned hard and he made all the right moves. But the Democratic Party establishment Capuano represents has seen the White House, the Congress, and the Supreme Court all slip away in recent years, putting a scare and a charge into precisely the constituencies, people of color, women, younger voters, that Presley was courting. So it wasn't enough for Capuano to say, hey, put me back in, and if we retake the House, Speaker Pelosi will be good to us. As they chanted at Presley's victory party tonight, you just saw in Julie McDonald's report, change can't wait. And in this low turnout election, the folks who are no longer willing to wait for change rallied behind her. As Capuano noted, two pillars of the House leadership on Beacon Hill, two progressive men of color lost their seats tonight as well. So this is no fluke, and it suggests that the baby boom generation's lock on the Democratic Party is coming to an end sooner than they wanted it to. And a new generation, the likes of Ayanna Presley, are ready to move in and not content with waiting any longer. And if you're an incumbent in November, you're sweating a little bit tonight, aren't you? You ought to be. Yeah. All right, John Keller, thank you so much.